ESPN Fantasy. They're giving away an autographed DeAndre Swift jersey and a merch store gift card. Get all the details by following them on Twitter at SGPN Fantasy. We're also brought to you by the MLB Gambling Podcast. They're giving away MLB jersey as part of their wild card playoff contest exclusively in the SGPN app. Hey, everybody, Joe Theismann here. You're listening to SGPN. So do this, let it ride. Everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Uh, we might have a pro. I might have left my schedule grid in the other room, so <laughs> I don't know. We might. Well, there might be a break at some point on the live stream. Apologies. I'm I'm uh, I'm sweating a little bit. Not no longer do Ryan, I think this Ryan is an looks, easy week. <laughs> Ryan looks very, very nervous. He's rattled. The pressure of his uh his incredible lock streak, eight no, has gotten to him. He's uh, losing his mind. I feel like uh, I'm the the a dog lost its toy just looking all around the room <laughs> for it. I can't I can't lose this one. <laughs> Uh, four and zero on your dog, Sean. So if you want to play dueling, uh, I don't believe in fairy tales dog. and juju. We can do that. Dog. All right, let's can, go, baby. Dog. Uh, shout out to us, uh, Daniel Enderling. Say, uh, wow. <laughs> saying uh, our UCF pick won him uh, six thousand dollars. Hashtag Legends Only. <laughs> that is hey. that's a lot of units to be thrown down on midweek college that, football. But that might I'm be glad one he hits unit. Her. That well, that's true. Yeah, I mean, one, I don't know. I don't know what Daniel's uh, bankroll is. I think he's, he's if, got big hands, you know. <laughs> Someone also DM'd me that they bet seven k. So I don't know if that's Daniel <laughs> rounding down or if that's some other maniac who also put down a lot of money <laughs> on UCF. But don't worry, we're here to talk about the National Football League. Ryan, uh, I just mentioned a couple contests uh, in the pre-roll, of course. Get involved. You got a chance to win an autographed DeAndre Swift jersey mm. and a uh, uh, MLB jersey, courtesy of the MLB Gambling Podcast. What's that? What's an Baseball MLB? Ryan. Uh, Baseball. What's that? It's. A, it's I'm sorry. I'm laser it's a sport focused. Where the Phillies the are in the football. playoffs. I'm laser focused on the National Football League. Uh, before are we, we just ignoring the Bonds record? Just just while while we're talking baseball, we're yes. just not going to address it. Well, everyone <laughs> wanted to. They realize we records, just want to have a celebration again. <laughs> records are the only thing that people care about in baseball, so they had to make it attainable. So they gave him a bunch of uh, champagne for hitting sixty-two. <laughs> I mean, some yeah. I guess a lot of kids are too young to remember. Uh, getting to uh, we haven't checked in. First quarter of our NFL Pick'em contest is essentially done. And uh, rattle off. We got uh, tied for eighth place at thirty-eight and a half picks correct against the uh, spread. AKA Badger, that Juan fella who uh, Ooh, yeah. is a big Discord guy. Know him in there. Also Beige. a sharp, sharp rugby better. Yes. Uh, if you're look for some yeah. more uh, rugby content coming your way. Uh, Beijing Wings also thirty eight oh, and a half. Fuck yeah. Miami Vice uh, thirty eight and a half. Chachi uh, thirty nine. Riston thirty five at thirty nine and a half. Wolverines twenty nineteen uh, thirty nine and a half. A uh, CK Major baby at forty. Key pop okay. or key poop at 42. <laughs> Skull pack 24 coming in at second place with 42 and a half. And Ryan, this must be a Virginia Tech alum oh, coming go. in uh, right now in currently let's in go. first place. Coach Pry, let's go. 44 total points. Fuente fire no. 69. <laughs> uh, why would you put Fuente and 69 in the same phrase? <laughs> no one needs to accidentally vi visualize that, right? No uh, one wants grit in their sixty nine. No, that's not a good. Speak outcome. for yourself, Ryan. We're that's not, not good. A good outcome for. We're anyone. not here to kink shame the audience. All right, let's get to it. <laughs> we're about to pick oh, every hello. NFL game against the spread. You're looking to get down on the National Football League. You got to do it over at sportsgamblingpodcast.com/slash/winbet. Heading out to Arizona, Ryan, this week. Uh oh. Which means I will be in a win bet state, which means 
Uh-oh. Look out for some same game parlays. Look out for some wind. Build the bets. In fact, blackjack. Uh, yes, online blackjack is pretty sweet over uh, on Win as well. And you have a chance to join Win Bet's biggest winners club. That's right. Whoever hits the biggest parlay on Win Bet this weekend, odds wise, gets a thousand dollar free bet. Uh, last week, someone turned six dollars into four thousand. Plus, they got a free thousand dollar bet. I mean, hashtag Dejans only. If that isn't Dejans only, I don't know what is. Again, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W Y N N B E T. So they know we sent you. Bet big, win bigger. Offer subject to change, terms and conditions at winbet.com. Must be 21 or older. President of the state replacement window is available. If you're someone you know has a gaming problem, call 1 800 522 4700. We're also brought to you by Fubo TV. Again, college and pro football, of course, the NFL red zone, all in 4K, all at no extra charge. Again, hundreds of channels of live sports and entertainment for the fraction of the price of cable on all your devices. Uh, you can use their cloud based DVR. You never miss a game, never miss an episode, no contract no commitment. And if you use our link, you get seven days free and 15% off your first month. Just go to Fubo TV.com slash S G P that's F U B O TV.com slash S G P. Welcome back. Here we are NFL as a shout out to the chat. I think it was Justin was complimenting me on my laser focusedness, uh, avoiding the T ball shit as he referred to it. Uh, D Bettis, I see you're in the chat. Please send me your email address. We're still trying to track down that merch card. I, <laughs> I promise you, Sean, it's not on me though. I've asked him for his email address multiple yes. times. Yeah, we got to get him and his son uh, hooked up with some SGPN yeah, gear. Of course, uh, D Bettis was the uh, winner of Real Men of DGens because his son hit like a 14 team teaser. Uh, we also got Connor Johnson in the YouTube chat. Never stay up this late for the show over oh, on the wow. East Coast, but it's my birthday today. Ooh. Let's go! <laughs> Excited to watch. Oh wow! Happy birthday, Connor. Hopefully, F G. Hopefully, he's uh, a little faded, a la Zeke Elliott during the pandemic. All right, yes, sir. Thursday night football, Sean. It's two weeks in a row where I I walk into you man to man and I say, wow. This seems to be a spot we should attack. Denver, the Broncos coming home back to the, uh, I guess, friendly confines there. Uh, a mile high, they say, in elevation. Minus three on the spread, minus 180 on the money line. Indy plus 150. 42 is the total. Jonathan Taylor out as we were watching, uh, as we were consuming some tape today. Even Quentin Nelson is getting whooped. One on one, that that sack fumble that we made fun of last yeah. week was Quentin Nelson getting beat one on one. Look, not often uh, do we get convergence of situations, but once again, we're looking at one: a tremendously bad passing up defense mm-hmm. against a team that couldn't find that's their, the Colts. That's the Colts could, against a team that couldn't find. Like literally, Russell Wilson can't find the asshole of this <laughs> offense right now. They lose Javante Williams. They don't really know what they're going to do at running back because I don't. I don't think they fully trust Melvin Gordon and his fumbling problems. No, I do think it this forces is- Russ to have to cook. Nathaniel Hackett is going to get lucky here because he doesn't have a fucking choice. Russ is going to cook. It's a great matchup to let Russ cook, and I have no clue. Why we're able to get this Denver defense? Their pat, the defensive back. It's, it's the best the unit pass, on the field. Rush. Uh, you could argue that if Indy was healthy, both defenses are are quite good. But as we stand here today, Matt Ryan is washed up, as we told you in the off season. Yes. Now everyone's doing the thing where Sean, we're we're collectively apologizing. <laughs> Obviously, the Colts are much worse than we thought. Th- we. Don't drag me into your we. It is I, funny when people drag you into their bad taste. I wasn't on we that all, take. We all thought that the uh, the Matt Ryan was an upgrade from Carson Wentz. I don't recall that. I recall being on the under. I recall pointing out that our boy John labeled that his lock <laughs> of the century, and I co-signed yep. that. And also, well, John is a bit of a consigliere here yeah. around the DGEN's only uh, d- virtual offices, and and for him to put that much faith in something. Matt Ryan was washed up. Matt Ryan is cooked. Uh, Shaquille Leonard is also out. 
AKA Darius, the artist, the linebacker formerly known as Darius Leonard. He's out. He hasn't been playing great. I mean, their defense, the passing defense is just ripe um, to be attacked. Uh, you, you mentioned their pass defense, Ryan. Like you said, it is 27th in DVOA. Matt Ryan is just a, he's a turnover machine right now. He is, he is Carson Wentz without the occasional explosive plays. Uh, Carson Wentz, his issue is he holds on to the ball too long. Matt he's Ryan trying just, to make a play. Yeah, he's trying to make a play. Matt and then Ryan. He gets a, Matt Ryan looks terrified back there. And Ryan, we've seen the elevation. Have you ever tried to boil noodles at at elevation? It doesn't work. The Not everyone knows thin. that, Sean. You gotta you know cook it a little bit longer. Yeah, but uh, and and we got a noodle arm here with Matt Ryan. I mean, you're so taking you're saying, this guy saying on this? short rest. You're putting him up in elevation against a decent defense. Now, well, let's keep going. So his his noodle arm is going to be at a, a little al dente. Maybe yes. it's going to snap because it's a little undercooked. I realized halfway through my analogy wasn't completely <laughs> accurate because it's harder to cook his uh, noodle yeah. at elevation. <laughs> but what I meant is, this the guy's arm is fucking cooked. Yeah. He's he's just bad. Like I, I the are fact you worried that we about have the to, line movement. That's the that's the to me this is uh, a classic the, the case. Two of things the, that are scary are um, well, I guess no Javante Williams, kind of scary, but it's not like he was lighting the world on fire. Uh, Nathaniel Hackett in prime time. Although he does have his little uh, coaching assistant guy who, who should help and explain <laughs> when to call timeouts. Please advisor. Uh, and, and then, yeah, I guess just kind of uh, who is making a case for this Colts team. But last but not least, like when we come to these Thursday night games, especially later on in the season, got this great Nuggets since 2016 from Game Three and after. Thursday home favorites are 32, 16, and one. To simplify it, right? That's 67% against the spread. Like, and it makes sense to start it after week three because week one, you're obviously not playing on a short week. And week two, it's only your second game. So you're not really as beat up. But like once week three hits, you're getting into your normal routine. The the Colts are really banged up, and the Colts have been horrific in the first half. They've lost every first half by an average of eleven points. Uh, again, their only win is against the Chiefs, in which like every fluke thing had to happen. They were at home; they were a home dog. It was a close your eyes special, very powerful. Yeah, everything had to go right for them to win that game and for them to cover. Both teams are one and three uh, against the spread. You got to take the home team here. It's 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 crazy. It's only three. I still like it if you're uh, you know right now. Win bet has it at three. Maybe they move it to three and a half. Love it at three and a half. Yeah, a couple other. Nuggets. I mean, as people uh, pointing out in the chat, Philip Lind, the Philip Lindsay revenge spot. Uh, we are Philip Lindsay podcast. He'll be playing. Called up off the practice squad for the Colts. Of course, he is a a Denver guy, a Colorado guy. So you know, sometimes guys show out like that. But but I, I don't think their O lines their O line is yeah good. just tidying up like with Jonathan Taylor, thirty second in rush DVOA. Yeah, thirty first in line yards on offense, twenty sixth in adjusted sack rate. And the, the the but my favorite nugget that I pulled out while researching this game, Matt Ryan over the last five years, 26, 41 and one against the spread. Period. And, and you look period. at period. You know, you look at uh, the uh, the offensive line for this Colts team. It's just not good. Like I said, Quentin Nelson, he's only the 18th rated guard right now. Like he was, he gave you an edge because he was like the best guard hands down. Uh, Matt Pryor, who again I identified as the weak link on this, this on true. this line, he's he's forty seventh in the league, and he's going up against Bradley Chubb. Like, there's just I, I don't think they're going to yeah. uh, have time to throw the ball, and if they do, I I like Denver's back end. Like the Denver's defense to me is the best unit on the field. It, it's going to be something ugly, like four, like seventeen to ten, maybe. I mean, well, what? again, why are we not? Why are we only seeing a fifty-six forty-four split on the on the bets? Why are we seeing this kind of, kind of move? We're, I guess we're seeing this move to three and a half and in, in in like the squarest of places. But why is it not just moving? It's so it's it's obvious whatever layer you're on. I it, I don't know it worries me, but I, it seems like we're this might be uh, this is on the card potential. We're not going to avoid Thursday night. No, right. Kind of been part of the formula, but we'll we'll discuss later. I guess six thirty. We're uh, on the Pacific Coast. So six thirty a.m. Which means what? We're uh, we're two thirty local time kickoff, I believe, in London in the stadium where the 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 hot spurs, Sean. We need a mm. hot spur uh, NFL team. The Giants, my New York Football Giants. 
taking across the pond. They've been good over there, Sean. Eli, always a man who traveled well. They're taking on the Green Bay Packers. Aaron Rodgers, a rare pick six last week, Sean. Yep. You want to hear a nugget? Do you do you know this nugget already? Nope. Fourth in his career. Wow. Um, that's insane. You know, you know what else is insane, Ryan? This is a great uh well, let me, hold on, let me finish sure. it. Minus eight, minus three eight on the money line. Giants three to one. Forty one is the total. Uh, this is a great stat. After 31 international series games in London, for the first time in NFL history, yep. the league will feature <laughs> a game with both teams owning a winning record when Green Bay takes on the Giants this Sunday. Now, Ryan, you've been all over the news as a Giants insider. Oh, wow. Uh, Danielle Jones uh, will be who? starting who? at quarterback. Danielle Jones oh, uh, will be starting at cute. quarterback. I, I, to me, if I'm the Giants, I'm putting in Davis Webb because they've shown an ability uh, to be able to run the ball, to be able to scheme up stuff. If the quarterback's mobile enough, they can kind of figure some stuff out. I think the worst case scenario for the Giants is putting a uh, oh, quarterback, a, a Daniel Jones, who's not 100%. Like Dan that to Jones me, on the road, 13 and 6 against the spread. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, but he's injured now, and that's. His whole thing is mobility. Like he was eight for thirteen for seventy-one yards. Hmm. You could say the only positive was his ability to run the ball. He looked pretty I think good. With, the, was, was, with his ankle all fucked up, taking that flight across. I mean, Ryan, you struggle when you get like a four-hour car ride. All of a sudden, your back's in flame. Uh, thing, things you, are sore. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's yeah. a young man. He's still athletic. I, I mean, I think this. You know the trends point heavily towards the favorite here. Yep, we've made a lot of noise about that. Just favorites, favorites by favorite more than a field goal. Uh, favorites would not name the Jags. It's a profitable trend overseas, and well, it makes sense, right? The better team is probably going to travel better, probably going to be more organized. But what I see here in New York is winning culture being built, mm. and what better? You got some new buddies. What better than a road trip overseas? Brian Table, Joe Shane, the boys enjoying some bangers and mash, getting some uh, getting some links golf in. Giants rank thirtieth in yards per carry Aww. surrendered. I, I think. What does that have to do with the, well, the, the road trip? The, the, the Packers do well against teams who can't slow the run down. Um, you know, they struggle against teams who played the the run well. They struggled. It's a tough match. They struggled against the Bucks. They got the win, even though the Bucks played some good uh good, you know, rushing defense. I, I just don't see them being able to slow down AJ Dillon, being able to slow down Aaron Jones. And then, you know, Romeo Dobbs had uh he he should have had that one deep ball. He's having some explosive plays. Like, I think the Packers are gonna be able to move the ball in offense, and a hobble Daniel Jones, uh, I think is they're just the Giants are just too one dimensional. They don't have receivers, right? They're quite one dimensional. It, it's uh, look, this is a tough matchup, but but you might have the Packers did a really nice job of not covering a spread last week as well. Oh, and that so, was a completely different game in my mind. Again, that was a, they were looking ahead to this London game. You had Bill Belichick. With a backup quarterback, with a you know a much bigger spread against a non-conference opponent, like it was easy to look ahead towards them. I think this is the ultimate. I mean, you saw Aaron Rodgers in that press conference. It was like, hey, we're gonna figure this out. He had a chip on his shoulder after a win. He had that look in his eye. Maybe he had stumbled. Maybe he had some ayahuasca in his locker room. I don't know. But he had <laughs> I was that. Eye. Say, will the witch be traveling? <laughs> he had the eye of the tiger, Ryan. I think I think the I think the Packers are going to light up the Giants. Yeah, I I really really hard game for me to to want to get involved with uh, from a betting perspective. <laughs> I, well, make the case for the Giants. I guess it's that they ugly the game up. They control the, case the ball. Is the same case Saquon that's been Barkley, happening, right? Yeah. Saqu it, How did the Patriots score points last week? A well, Bailey Zappi had a deep ball, which the Giants can can randomly do that. Okay. Darius Slayton has forced his way on the field by being healthy. He can handle the deep ball. Kadarius Tony trick play loading. So we need points there. And then, uh, frankly, Barkley hasn't really been stopped. So you know, you say what you will about this offense, but who who has shut down Saquon Barkley this year, even in a very one-dimensional offense? So 
could this game get weird overseas? Absolutely. Is eight points uh, probably the right amount? Sure. Is the winning culture going to be building on that flight over to, to to beautiful London? Yes. This team this team is filled with with fucking fairy dust and bullshit right now. It's beautiful. It's, Ryan's heart's not beautiful. even in this. Uh, this is a tough spot. I told you when we were previewing this team before. Like they're gonna they, they might struggle against quarterbacks that can pick them apart. What where I hesitate is I don't know if the pat like I don't know if Aaron Rodgers has his receivers yet. And so, well, watching that game against frankly, New England, I think I think he has Romeo Dobbs. I think he still likes Lazard, and we got Bobby Tunyon involved. Bobby Tunyon got a touchdown. I think that I think I think they're going to be able to move the ball in the Giants. Dan Jones, international man of mystery. I mean, what better way to to kick off the month of October than Dan Jones beating <laughs> Aaron Rodgers in London? Seattle. All right, we're we're in the normal time game. Um, oh, you're taking the Giants? Of course, I'm taking the Giants. Okay, you didn't say. Uh, yeah, I'm taking the Gi- Packers tease. That's that's quite interesting. How could that possibly lose? Seattle. Yeah, anything's possible. It's the National Football League, Grand. Uh heading to New Orleans. Geno Smith is uh, a legit MVP candidate, Sean. Lighten up the no, lighten up the stat sheets, lighten up the advanced stats. I think he's number 2 in DR. It's it blowing my mind right now. He's playing like he's got zero fucks to give and I love it. Uh <laughs> I don't know if you saw the quote from Rashad Penny today. Saying he's running more freely because he doesn't have to worry about the quarterback screwing up the plays. Shots fired. Mm. Geno Smith, dog. Well, Seattle's heading to New Orleans, who, like everyone this season, because the Packers and Giants are also opting out of the bye. No bye after the game in London. New Orleans heading home. It sounds like Dalton will start again. Minus five and a half, minus 240 on the money line, 195 for the Seahawks. 46 is the total. Kamara, we were hearing maybe out again, but now it sounds like Kamara is going to play. I don't know if this is this is decoy type shit. You know, my read on this game is, I feel like I want to fade the Seahawks because this this is all bullshit. Like this, they're not going to continue. Yeah, but, but on the other side, on the, the other side, yeah, on the other side, can you lay five and a half with Andy Dalton? I, I know Dalton looked. Uh, competent. Defense. The defense is good. Defense looks competent, but the the Saints minus seven turnover differential, and Dalton is not afraid. Uh, he turned the ball over in London. I think I don't know if I can trust this team, the Saints team, to come back from London after a tough loss. They lose by a double doink, and then you got to come back and get up for a Seahawks team that's that's really. Um, you know, really has a lot of energy. Seattle has won 14 of the last 15 games that started in the AM on the West coast. Um, so I think that this game would qualify for Seems that random, right? Uh, yeah. I, maybe they, yeah. I, I, Pete Carroll. I saw someone <laughs> tweeted out Pete Carroll's prime was wasted on Russell Wilson, <laughs> which is a hilarious <laughs> troll, but Pete Carroll, hey, look at Pete Carroll's their, their offense is playing pretty well. Now their defense, I'm we weren't on the Seahawks this year. Uh, what do you mean? We, like, I like, was on the over. I'm pissed. We weren't higher on them. Like we, I, I said I was a lot higher on the Seahawks than than most because I, I thought they had a competent coaching staff, and that's being proven out here. Um, Saints are a very sloppy team. Lead the league in penalty yards, 319. Uh, Seahawks are up there as well. I, I just, you know, I, I'm I'm obviously worried about Seattle's defense, but I don't know if they've had enough time with Andy Dalton to really blow a team out or to really put a team away by two scores. This feels like this a field goal game. Fucked. I mean, what are they doing to us here? What's the point of this? Yeah. Five and a half points. Honestly, the, 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 like I said, the fact that the Seahawks are kind of a public Seattle third in the league, 6.3 yards per play on offense. Now, obviously that one game, um, who have they played? Uh, right, uh, and they're they're you know they're dead last in yards per play allowed they, on they, defense. Uh, they had a great half against uh, Denver, you know, in like the, just a crazy game. Yeah, they got completely shut down by a good defense in San Francisco. Yeah, I don't think this the San Francisco team Detroit makes everyone look good. I just think the Saints are a good defense. Eighty percent of the tickets are on the Seahawks right now. Um. 
to me, that signals that we we should be betting New Orleans. That this this spread could could rise as we find out Kamara's back. And I don't think I care about the quarterback because I think Dalton played better than Jameis has been playing. I'm I'm, I'm going to I'm going to lay the points. I'm going to take Geno in the points. Um, I. I can't really argue against it. And the, and the Saints don't blitz. If you don't blitz Gino, I think he plays really well. He succeeded against teams that don't blitz. Yeah, let's see how Latimer shutting down Metcalf and let, let's just see how this their their offense looks. Be, like that's the handicap to me is the the Saints just completely smother them and and they're able to score enough points cuz they have bullshit like Taysom Hill and Andy Dalton. Again, go watch the game last week. He made some good throws. Houston, Jacksonville, as the Houston Texans Twitter feed mentioned this week, it's Jags week. <laughs> Jacksonville laying seven minus three thirty on the money line. Houston plus two sixty. Forty three and a half is the total. Jags will be wearing horrible teal uh, throwback unis. Mm. Perhaps paying homage to the great Blake Bortles, who I think I don't know was that is that real? He announced his retirement today. Yes. Okay. So. Uh, maybe there's a little bit more emotion in the building. Blake Bortles uh, does have a higher career passer rating in the playoffs than Tom Brady. So shout out to the <laughs> shout out to uh, Blake that year. God damn it! Yeah, I mean, what what a time to be. All right, so I do like getting back to the New Orleans game because Research Flat Earth is chiming in. Mm. I do like a a Geno stack and a <laughs> Dalton stack with like Olave and Jawan Jennings. I think both those formulas yeah. are pretty interesting because. I, again, or there's Troutman maybe like some someone dirty, someone of right? the tight ends. It, I think there's a world where that game could turn into a shootout, much like that Detroit game. Um, so he was mentioned Andy Dalton in the Millie Maker. I, I I don't mind playing that game uh, in DFS for your like main stack, either side, Seattle or New Orleans. Mm, I maybe my my opinion would be it was more Detroit than Seattle. Like Seattle was just there for the ride, um, and they took advantage of the ride. Houston. Is looking ahead to a bye week, which I feel like I, I was tracking it last week or last year, so we must have enjoyed talking about it. Teams show up better. It, it used to be teams showed up better after the bye. It's not that way anymore because of the uh, the latest like agreement with the NFL Players Association. They can't practice or do any work during the bye week, so they come out rusty. And actually, looking ahead towards the bye week is the week to play the team. You're supposed to play them the week before. They go uh, into the buy. All right, so yeah, so they're looking into the buy. Jacksonville coming off. It feels like a lot of folks are making excuses for the Jags in that game against the Eagles. Ah, we'll just throw it away because it was bad weather. Ah, it was a good showing. I mean, they got up early. I, I, if you get up fourteen points on a team immediately, and you just completely disintegrate. Or is that really like a the attaboy? Great job. Yeah, I don't know if I were people saying that that yeah, they get my good. my circles may not may may vary, but <laughs> I feel I I, definitely, I feel like people gave the Jags a a bunch of shit for laying an egg again. Okay. I was on the Eagles last week. <laughs> were you? Uh, because okay. I was on the Jags because of the situation spot. Like you go all the way out to the West Coast, then all the way back to the East Coast in shitty weather. Now all the way back to Florida. Yeah, Trevor Lawrence <laughs> fumbled four times. Um, Houston won both games outright uh, last year. They they were only the they only had four <laughs> wins. Two of them were against the Jacksonville Jaguars. I am worried about uh, Houston's just defense in general. I am worried about uh, Trevon Walker getting pressure on uh, Davis Mills. Like I, ah, I think that could be a real issue. Davis Mills has looked bad. He looked he's looked to be a slow processor, just like. Just like our friend Justin Fields. Fun nugget about the Jags. You ready for this one? They've been favored. This will be the third time they've been favored since September of 2020. <laughs> the 33 game span. Yeah. Uh third time again. That they, they they've all come against the Texans and they've lost multiple games in this oh. stretch. Like them oh. being favored is a trend that you just can't you can't it's lay like points the, with the Jags. It, it's like the 49ers. They right? always play the Rams well. Like regardless of the team, regardless of the situation, or even the Jags at home against the Colts. They just beat the Colts. Like you can you can take a look at the matchups yeah. and whatever. The Texans hang with this Jags team. I think um 
Also, I did some uh, some some media availability diving into the Texans. Yeah, they seem to be mildly annoyed that they haven't won a game yet. No, and they should like they've been a lot of close. They've been in a lot of minutes of games. <laughs> yeah, like it's a fun way to say it, but they've they've been involved in all the games they've played this year. Yeah. And uh, you know this maybe the little bit blood blood on the uh, they smell the blood with 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 Goldilocks. I mean, well, and and Jacksonville again. I think their defense is is solid, twelfth um, in rush DVOA. But that's how the Eagles attack them, right? Like they they made it a game with Miles Sanders, and they said, "Hey, we can't throw the ball right now. The weather's rough. Um, we're just gonna pound the rock with Miles Sanders." Yeah. Uh, why could the Texans not do that with Damian Pierce? The injury report, it's a little worry, uh, worrisome. It's a long for the Texans. A lot of D line injuries. I, I don't know. I, I can't lay the points with the Jags, though. I mean, once upon a time we would have said God hates Jags and just taken the, the Texans as a seven point dog and moved dog. on. This is just uh, this is too big of a number for a team that shows up in spots, right? Like the- they showed up in Chicago. They showed up what they haven't really laid an egg yet. There are a number of games this week that are like like the London game or or the Seattle game, way more clueless on. But this one just seems obvious. It's a division game. The 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 AFC South, Ryan. We're such Texan hogs. Maybe maybe the Texans aren't going to win the division, but our prediction that the AFC South is complete dog shit and any team <laughs> could win it. it so and right. why not roll the dice of the Texans? So right. That I think is right. Like every team has two wins. And I mean, who's the best team in that division right now? Maybe the Titans, or maybe the Jags. Uh, this we'll see if the if the Jags blow Houston out, then I'll then I'll start leaning into the Jags might be good angle. I think the Jags just caught the Colts at home. Jags uh, are in in, prob- in, in, yeah. in the perfect spot. They played a super injured uh, Justin Herbert, and then they got their they blew a lead and and really didn't uh, show up for three quarters of that game uh, against the Eagles. I, I yeah I mean I I don't think again I, I don't think any team has taken a step forward. We've maybe had the Texans fall down a couple times, and the Colts clearly have have signaled to everyone that they're not really planning on being involved in the race. But yeah, it, it's a mess of a division. It's it is it clearly the worst division? Yeah, yeah. I think Matt Ryan, Matt Ryan just being so bad. Carson <laughs> Wentz was better than Matt Ryan. Like we can all say it now. Carson Wentz was not this bad. So we're year. both on Houston plus seven, right? Let's Pittsburgh go. heads to Buffalo. The Bills laying fourteen minus nine hundred on the money line. Steelers plus six hundred forty six is the total. This is the largest dog spot for the Steelers since oh nineteen fifty. Maybe all time. I've seen conflicting reports there. Uh Funny enough, the second largest was thirteen and a half versus the Cowboys in the Super Bowl, which mm. they lost twenty seven seventeen. Covered the spread. Thank you very much. So, look, it's a layman's take, but it's Tomlin in a spot where he's got to get the team up because they're starting the rookie. Well, it's, yeah, and and their backs are truly against the wall, and then you have a Buffalo team that's kind of looking ahead, Ryan. I know wow. you don't have your I, schedule this, card. This was on my actual calendar. The, the, Ryan said a reminder note of like a Bills look ahead spot to the Chiefs next oh. week. Uh and and I'll say it. I'll come out. I I thought Kenny Pickett uh looked pretty solid in that game. I know you look at the box score and go 10 for 13, three interceptions. One of the interceptions was a Hail Mary. Uh, another one was a uh, Fryermuth where he should have just, just Yeah, like it went off his hands. And then the other one was Deontay Johnson who should have made a better play on the ball. Kenny Pickett is not afraid to throw the rock. He's yeah. not afraid to run. Like that was my biggest complaint with Mitch Trubisky. The, the whole reason he has any sort of value is mobility. Kenny Pickett ran the ball in twice. Uh, I think he's going to be running all over the fields. He he has a connect. They're using George Pickens. Kenny Pickett's smart. He knew that when he ran that one in and he cut it back to take yeah. the take the contact. That's how you get the locker room. So yeah. th- this is just the classic. The team gets up. The team is the 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 collective of the team. I understand the injury report doesn't look great. I understand there's plenty of metrics around what Buffalo has been doing to teams at home, averaging double digit uh, victories, averaging winning by over 14 points. Uh, the the classic spread of Buffalo either cover like they either lose the game or they win the game by two touchdowns. 
all of these things apply here, but this, we said this before the season started. We said this in May when we broke down the NFL season. This was the look ahead spot of all look ahead spots. Yeah. And so we're we, we're sitting here today and we're getting 14 points with the Pittsburgh Steelers, Mike Tomlin, and fucking Ke- we're going to find out if Kenny Pickett sucks very quickly. Take the points. Are we are we will we be talking about a 6 to 1 money line in the National Football League later? <laughs> um Josh Allen was doing Josh Allen things. Well, I saw and, a stat. And, and Minka, worst DVOA in the first half of games last week. Josh Allen. Minka Fitzpatrick uh, is a playmaker. He may he he gets turnover. Uh, he's also dealing with a knee issue. If Minka Fitzpatrick is out, I get pretty nervous. Uh, Joel in the YouTube chat pointing out uh, TJ Watt. Oh, and seven. The Steelers are without him. <laughs> that, again, that's scary. We need TJ Watt back if we're ever going to have a chance to win this division. But we also need Kenny Pickett, and we finally got Kenny Pickett, and we're getting fourteen points. Oh man, I, this is just like a, a system play of just taking fourteen point dogs. Like this, you know. I, I the don't, revenge spot sucks. Uh-oh. Yes, uh, as uh, Bills Mafia DJ ninety two pointing <laughs> out, uh, Bills remember the the week one uh, loss last year. Do they remember that, or do they remember losing to Kansas City in the playoffs? Yeah, what have they? I kind of feel like they remember in the. the off- I know they remember a lot of things in Buffalo, but do, what do they remember more? Like if if Josh Allen is in the supermarket uh, and, and someone's busting his chops, do they mention fourteen seconds or do they mention a week one money line parlay that they had the bills and then they totally got boned? Like, I come like on, it. yeah, I, we're, to- I, we're we're I like it. We're washing it. It's not the revenge angle doesn't matter. No, I mean this this Steelers team probably isn't as good as as I've thought, uh, and certainly the defense isn't the same without T.J. Watt, but. Um, I have picked against the Buffalo Bills every week of the season. <laughs> I'll continue to pick against the Buffalo. But I, I don't know. I, I, this is just obvious. Like you said, it's 14 points in the NFL. Yeah, we're we're not we're not going to disrespect our show by coming on here and giving out 14 point favorites in the NFL. No, I'm not. All right, Ryan. Let's move forward. We will. Hey, uh, Live's game plan app. This thing is great. Like all these. A lot of these nuggets that I pull for my uh, little research sheet, I'm getting right from Elias. It's it's pretty awesome. You just fire up the Elias Game Plan app again, E L I A S. You scroll down to uh, you know whatever game you want to um, look into. Uh, Bills are five one and two against the spread uh, when favored by ten or more points. Um, rookie quarterbacks. We'll scroll past that stat as well. Again, there's there's a bunch of good nuggets. Um, Football yeah. isn't played in a book. No, that's or right. right. Or the Elias Game Plan app. Um, st- <laughs> I'm trying to. I keep scrolling, trying to find a positive Steelers nugget. Uh, there's not a lot here for the Steelers, but there's a lot of great Bills nuggets. There's a lot of great nuggets in general when it comes to NFL fantasy. You need the Elias Game Plan app. Download in the App Store today and use the promo code SGPN25 for 25 percent off your first month. That's promo code SGPN25 for the Elias game plan app. Oh man, everyone's favorite time. Time to talk about Manscaped. That's right. Hey, you. Yeah, you got Bush. <laughs> they actually have this trademark. Oh man. Uh, well, apparently, if you have Bush, um, you know, you haven't been using Manscaped. So take control of your Bush. It's important. Uh, you know, gotta fight. Uh, oh, here we go. I do have the lawnmower sound effect. Look at it. Look at the clear some of the bushes out. You got to get manscaped.com. Head over to manscaped.com, promo code SGP, 20% off and free shipping. Uh, they have a note here do not read, but I'm going to read it anyway. Host to talk about how they approach taming their bush. <laughs> I love how they say taming their bush because, again, it's a jungle down there. I mean, uh, I got one of those uh, with those giant machetes mm. before I found Manscaped, and you know <laughs> when you're hacking through the brush, you can uh, you can make some mistakes. That's mm. why you need Manscaped <laughs> and their lawnmower 4.0. We're talking precision screw, precision grooming, LED light. Oh man! Um, <laughs> all right, I will share this. Uh, this is off can the record. Get right? Sean's uh, head cut onto the Dundee. Pulling out the, that you call that's him. not a that's not a groomer. This is a groomer. Um, is the lawnmower 4.0. All right, so this is not included in the script, but I will share this with you guys because you're great listeners. 
I will. I had a couple cocktails again. Uh, don't uh, don't drink and trim would be my other advice. <laughs> had a couple cocktails. Was completely uh, bent over, and between being bent over <laughs> and being a little tipsy, I accidentally fell forward into the uh, the bathroom counter. Didn't do any serious damage, but there was a loud like clanging noise, and my wife going, "What's going on in there?" And I said, uh, "Getting ready for our anniversary oh. because I love you." And I love you, the audience. Manscaped.com promo code SGP, twenty percent off and free shipping. Speaking of uh, awesome gifts, the gift every woman wants: no house advantage. That's right. It is. Uh, it's DFS. We're going to be giving out our no house advantage picks on tomorrow's uh, props show. Again, it's it's super fun. I know the audience. The audience loves new ways to get down on action and a DFS contest where you're just doing over under player props. Like, come on. Uh, you can win up to two hundred fifty thousand dollars plus in cash, or you can just go up against the house. Again, you can win twenty x if you go five for five on the player props. Not just the NFL, MLB, PGA, MMA, NASCAR, NBA. They got it all. NoHouseAdvantage.com promo code SGPN. Download the app. Use that promo code. First deposit match up to twenty five dollars. NoHouseAdvantage.com promo code SGPN. All right, let's go. All right, uh, a thriller. Yes. To settle the top of the table in the NFC South, Atlanta, the Falcons head to Tampa, where the Bucks are laying eight and a half, minus four hundred on the money line. Atlanta plus three ten, forty seven and a half is the total. I was asked if if the uh, Tom Brady divorce news um, has me upgrading or downgrading the Bucks. <laughs> upgrading. Dude's gonna be super focused on oh, being yeah. at the office. Did you see he T V twelve is getting turned up to ten? <laughs> Did you see he updated his uh Twitter profile oh, photo no. from a photo of him holding hands with his family oh. to his <laughs> offensive line? Like <laughs> I know it's fun to make fun of Tom Brady, but this dude is just an all time football guy. I'm with you. I think he's gonna be more focused oh, after the God. divorce. Dude, the Bucks, they're lo- losing Cordero Patterson. I mean, this guy was a dog. He he really put it on the line. He kept drives alive. I mean, the Falcons won the game last week, throwing the ball seven times. Now they're going up against a Bucks team who got embarrassed. Their defense got embarrassed on prime time. Their strength normally is stopping the run. That rushing defense is going to show up and show up in a in a big way. And I think they're going to force Marcus Mariota to beat him with the passing game. And I I just don't think they can do it. Uh, my favorite stat so far is uh, you have to go all the way back to 2002 um, of when the last time Tom Brady lost three games in a row. Uh, Kyle Pitts, the guy who everyone hates, uh, he mispracticed today with a hamstring issue that just popped up. I don't know if that helps or hurts mm-hmm. the Falcons. May I mean on what his like six routes he ran? Uh, I don't know how you can pull a hamstring doing that. It's not like he's out there blocking. Godwin is good to go. Evans. I mean, I, I just don't think they're going to be able to stop this this passing game. They got rid of dead weight Cole Beasley. I mean, he obviously was there to do a job. I'm really wondering if he was somehow uh, working for G- Giselle with Giselle. T- he wasn't on the team. I mean, why does he get? I mean, I thought Cole Beasley was he like was an given all-time. a chance to retire because they were going to cut his ass because Tom <laughs> Brady found out what he was up to. I thought, I thought uh, you don't cross the family. Yeah, I, th- I thought Cole, I thought Cole Beasley was going to fit in perfectly. <laughs> he seems like a Florida guy. He seems like a TB, uh, like a Tom Brady guy. It, it was funny because Cole Beasley was talking so much shit about I'm not done. Just wait. Oh, I wait till I get my shot. And then he got his shot. Played two games. He's like. All right, I'm retiring. I'm going to focus on my family, which is uh, which is really. I mean, they must have had a, a conversation in the like the Bucks media department. They're like, "Can you wait a couple of days to put out the pro family retirement thing? Uh, we're dealing with the Brady divorce story. Can you just wait till like uh, Wednesday afternoon?" Cole, he doesn't give a shit. Uh, Falcons are also four and zero against the spread this season. Th- th- this just doesn't go on forever. Okay, yeah. So Atlanta never started five and zero ATS. Yeah. Uh, of previous teams uh, to to start this uh, to start out undefeated and qualified by catching six points or more. It's only happened three times hmm. in NFL history. This is one of them. Chargers were plus six and a half in two thousand twelve. Got their ass beat twenty six to nine. 
Saints in 1998 were plus ten and a half, four and zero ATS at the time. Lost thirty one to zero. Well, you get the trend. Maybe even catching all these points, it's disguised, but we're getting a lot of value here because maybe, just maybe, like the look ahead would have told you, this is a ten point, ten and a half point, yeah, twelve point line. Uh, and even if you look at the stats from their last game, people will see the scoreboard and be like, "Oh, the Bucks really got their ass beat." They didn't really get their ass beat. It was a strange game. You had the turnover, and again, you look at the stats. You had a motivated pure Chiefs team. Once pure stats, that. box store bullshit, though. The Bucks, you know, they're even with this team. Uh, they even had a higher DVOA than the Chiefs in this game, which is kind of a, a super anomaly. But and then uh, you know, you mentioned it, but Tom Brady losing streak. He's he, he's never he's never lost three in a row. No. 14 times. No, in 2002 he did. It was since 2002. Yeah. Well, there's been 14 times since then. 14 and 0. Let's go. In that spot 12 and TV 2. 12. 12 and 2 against the spread. That's what matters. That's still pretty strong. Um I I've been a Falcons guy and it, it does seem like this is the time to fade them. T- I'm going to I'm going to go down swinging with Tampa in my teaser cuz it's hard to Hard to ignore this. How one do you this not week. put him in a teaser? I know it's just. Wa- right. We're both Wong on Tampa minus eight. Chicago now. heads to Minnesota, in the spaceship. No rest off the London trip. We'll have to check back in with CJ on the on the dad logic with Kirk Cousins laying a touchdown here minus three thirty on the money line twenty or plus two sixty for the Bears forty three and a half is the total. You know, as I was digging into some of the numbers before we started doing this uh, this week's episode, I, I I figured the Vikings would be a popular team this week, but I, I I noticed that in some places the Bears are getting bet, a- and it, su- surprising, right? Well, because and, and, they and, haven't done anything. They they can't. God forbid this is a shootout. They can't keep up in that. No, and again, they're the the Vikings are at home. That spaceship is a is a tough place to play. Um, you know, in this particular rivalry between the Bears and Vikings, the home team uh usually wins. Vikings are thirty eight and twenty six against the spread at home since twenty fourteen. I think if you were talking yourselves into picking the Bears, which you know, admittedly, I was higher on the Bears than most. I thought, and again, they are <laughs> they are two and two, yeah. so it's not like still not going to go over their win total. Uh, well, we'll see, Ryan. Ho, ho, hodl. And to your point, actually, they have Chicago has won three of the last four in Minnesota. For what it's worth, Chicago's won what three of the last four in Minnesota. I think this is. Uh, Oh, that's weird. Cause I was seeing, and maybe it just must've extended longer. The yeah, trend. Yeah. If you, if you draw it out, it gets bad, but three of the last four in Minnesota, that that's truth. But I think this is, I think this is a good spot actually for the white, the Vikings, like the, the bears, the way they win this game, obviously is running the ball. They just lost uh, I think Cody white hair. He's on IR their guard. I, I think that could, it could be a big issue as far as like getting a push up front and being able to run on the, on the Minnesota Vikings. And I think the Vikings, they have not been great running the ball this year. However, the bears defense, their run defense is kind of falling apart. So you have uh, Dalvin cook and Alexander Madison running against this bears defense, which as they showed you against Saquon Barkley, like the, the giants are very one dimensional and, and the bears still couldn't slow them down. Uh, again, I, I kind I thought I was going to come into this thinking I mean, I honestly, it was just straight up like Kirk Cousins coming off the London trip, but this isn't prime time. No, and I, I kind of, I, I brought myself around to the idea that I, I don't know if I can, I can be backing this Bears team in any sort of spot where it seems like they may not be able to slow people down. And then, like I said, when I saw that they were taking some action, people are betting the Bears here. Again, hard to see us not putting this in the teaser, but we'll be we'll be chalk here. Anti Bears uh, get a podcast for sure this week. Tennessee heads to Washington. Titans are laying two and a half. Sean, mm. you, you, you take the two and a half. You don't lay the two and a half. Well, minus one forty on the money line. The Redskins plus one fifteen. Forty three is the total. This one popped out pretty obviously to me. I don't think Tennessee has the same level of pass rush 
that we've seen from some of the teams that Carson Wentz has looked really bad, the Eagles, the Cowboys over the last couple of weeks. I think this is a different kind of matchup. I, I don't think I brought up the back to back road stuff, but back to teams on a back to back road spot are six and four straight up, uh, five, four and one against the spread. So not much to take out of that. Tennessee's in that situation. Tennessee's also got to look ahead to the bye. Mm. Uh, to your to your point on so that, so we like Tennessee for that. This game sucks, um, but but this is a classic. Like Carson Wentz will have good numbers in this game. I don't think they're going to pressure him enough, and, and I do think that Washington will be able to slow down the pretty one dimensional Tennessee uh, offensive attack. The, the problem is the Commanders. They have eighteen points over the last two weeks. Now I I, I understand. Like I just think. Washington is really, really bad. I, I know you should take the home dog here. Like the Titans as a non-conference road favorite um, doesn't, doesn't make sense at all, but I, I, I can't take Carson Wentz unless you're catching some points. Like he We're as catching a, two and a half as a gut handicapper, Ryan, just <laughs> this, this commander's team does not pass any eye tests. And you know who passed the eye test last week? And I think could pass the eye tests again is Derrick Henry. They're getting him involved in the passing game. Uh he's running downhill. He seems to have a little bit of burst. Vrabel as a dog. You know what to do here. No, no, Vrabel as a favorite is in a good situation. Uh I'm I'm going to take Tennessee minus 2 and a All half. right, we'll we'll disagree on this one. I'm I'm going to follow going, I'm going against like if you're a textbook gambler, if you're not if you're not an eye test guy, not a film guy, I I I totally make sense to take Washington plus 2 and a half, but as my, I, I just cannot pick the commanders. I just can't do it. I think Tennessee is uh, Washington has a decent advantage against Tennessee's defense. I think, I think Carson Wentz will put up some numbers in this. John game. Dotson is dealing with uh, injuries yeah. as well. Terry McLaurin loading uh, Debo or uh, Curtis Samuel. I think it's a little banged up as well. Terry McLaurin low loading Derek Thank Henry you. loading Miami has to New York to take on the jets jets plus one forty on the money line. Dolphins minus three and a half, minus one seventy, forty five and a half is the total. Uh, there, you know, the look ahead here, kind of weird. Uh, Tua in, this was like six. Tua out. Uh, Jets win a game. It's now three and a half. I, I think it went as low as three. We lay the three and a half. We don't take the three and a half. Teddy covers, man. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater, forty four, twenty and one ATS. In his career starts, he's also twenty four and six against the spread on the road. Yeah, like this is where Teddy Bridgewater thrives. Where, you know, you don't expect much from him. They also had that the Thursday. They're coming off the Thursday, Mini so they have they have extra time to get Bridgewater set up in the offense. They have a motivated Tyreek Hill and and Jalen Waddle. I mean, you know, Sauce Gardner has been playing well, but he can't cover both of them. Um, Byron Jones is out for Miami. And you know we saw some stuff with Zach Wilson. Here's the here's the issue though. What stuff? Fourteen turnovers and fourteen starts, forty five sacks, and those fourteen. No, starts? I'm just saying. I think he had a good fourth quarter against the Steelers. Here's what I would say though: Zach Wilson three for eleven, uh, for forty one yards and an interception when facing the blitz last week. Like that's all the Dolphins do is fucking blitz. If you go back and watch his game, Zach Wilson is tricky. Because his highlights look good, yeah. But if you watch him, like the totality of what he did, he didn't look that good. No, he and looked really bad for most of the first three quarters. He made some put plays, together though. a couple drives, yeah. But that's but that's going to be Zach Wilson, and I think to your point, it, it's not a great matchup uh, for the Jets here on either side of the ball. Uh, I do. I think their secondary actually is going to have some trouble here. Teddy Bridgewater. I'm now regretting not giving out the Teddy Bridgewater DFS lineup on the episode <laughs> this week because oh man, it's gonna it's gonna crush Miami minus three and a half is the play. It, this is a strong play. I well, think. and and you know Ryan as a guy who uh, follows the market, everyone is on Miami minus three and a half. That's the only thing that is scary about this play. The Jets are also dealing with like serious offensive line like clustered I injuries. So uh, sure. I, I guess we're being chalky. I, I, I'm not actually seeing the data to back that up. I'm seeing a lot of splits of like 60, 40, where you have heavy dollars. Mm. So you'll have maybe the bet splits being closer to two thirds, one third, but the dollars bet is like 80, 20. 
I don't think that necessarily. I think what's concerning is that the number is shrinking from six to three. The money coming in on Miami, it's not stretching out. Well, what what happens when the line sticks at three and a half, Sean? They need people to take the Jets. <laughs> Chargers heading to Cleveland, where the Browns are plus two and a half, plus one fifteen on the money line, minus one forty for the Chargers. Forty seven is the total. And Ryan, of course, uh, people are throwing out Teddy two gloves. Teddy covers, of course, mean? refer to him as the Butler. The Butler. Two white is gloves. Is that not is that not mainstream? I don't know. I was listening to the game on the radio. Was he rocking the two white gloves, right? Of course. Okay. It's it, he's the butler. Although I, I was trying to tweet out a butler thing and I realized like the butler from Fresh Prince didn't actually wear gloves. Bullshit. Hmm. He's less of a butler than Teddy Bridgewater. All right. Uh and, and we didn't even mention it, but the same reasons we like the bump. For Kenny Pickett as well, right? Like you got the backup juice going. All right. Um look, look, this is Chargers on the road. That's the simple handicap. But I actually, if you dive into the matchups, the injuries, like Chargers. Did you, did you, you announced the spread? Yeah. It, we're picking it at two and a two and a half, unfortunately. But it's gonna be perfect because it, it falls into our uh our corporate tenets of taking the two and a half, not laying the two and a half. I think this is a good matchup for Cleveland on the field. Great matchup. I think they're they're getting healthy at the right time. As you alerted me, uh, I was I didn't think there was a chance that uh, Miles My- Garrett was going to be back this week. It sounds like there's even a chance that Clowney could play. Yeah. Um. It, this team's getting healthy at the right time. They just uh, brought back uh, Greedy, or at least designated him uh, to return from IR. I I think this could be a tough matchup for the Chargers. We saw how good Nick Chubb can look, and and Kareem Hunt, obviously an absolute dog. This feels like one of those games where we're gonna be like, wow, the Chargers they they ran forty times against the Chargers, <laughs> and Herbert only threw for two hundred and fifty yards. And in my uh, DFS lineup that I was put together with the uh, AJ Brown, Devonta Smith, uh, Zach Ertz on the bring back, I also threw in Kareem Hunt and the Chargers defense. I think they can create some turnovers against Justin Fields. Or sorry, uh, Justin Herbert. Same difference. Oh wow! Um, Miles now now the Miles Garrett situation. He's not officially back. He's back practicing. He winked at the media, which everyone's, and he looked fine. I think like he was, I think pretty much okay from that car crash. The video is crazy. I think he was just a little shook up, maybe a little banged up from from almost dying wow, in the car crash. Now Get you're giving that man a seat. You're giving Miles Garrett a second lease on life against some backup offensive lineman. I think he could wreck this game. And that's why I like the the Browns. I think one, they can control the clock. They can control uh, the pace of the game with the running game that with the receiver stuff uh, or sorry, with like throwing to the, res- the running backs, Nick Chubb's been involved in the passing game, Kareem hunt. I, I mean, really, it's just like the it's matchup a- of miles Garrett against whoever the, the, the charges are trotting out. He's going to fuck this game up. I mean, yeah, it's unfortunate, but the Chargers are charging. They're hurt, and this is another game where you're seeing the that that money split, where more of the bets coming in on the Chargers, but the big bets coming on the Browns. Hence the move from three to two and a half. So, uh, it's just it, this. I don't know why, but the Chargers. Well, why can't the Chargers change as a team? <laughs> why can't they change? Sandy why are they going to be the same thing? Super Do we know if Keenan Charged. Allen has a chance? It sounds like no, no, it sounds like he re aggravated no. his hamstring. He was trending in the right direction last week. Sounds like he re aggravated. They'll End never the week, admit yeah. to re aggravating it, but it, it's not looking good for Keenan Allen. Oh, and I'm really pissed. I didn't bring this up, but over the last 20 years, this is a Teddy Bridgewater nugget. We love the Butler. Did you know? Only Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Peyton Manning, and Drew Brees has made you more uh, on a percentage basis has made you more money than <laughs> Teddy Bridgewater. Yes, sir. I, I mean, come on, that's respect. All right, this is the this game may not have to be on a TV. Detroit heading to New England, mm. where Bailey Zappi, Brian Hoyer, laying three points minus one seventy <laughs> on the money line. I mean, Jared Goff sucks. Island has to be deserted right now based on his performances lately. But come on, man! Plus one forty on the money line. Forty six and a half is the total. I mean, we love this team as a dog. Is it that simple? Is it enough points? Because Jared Goff against Bill Belichick is a little bit scary. Yeah, but so is uh, to me. Three points in the Super Bowl. What is what is scarier, Ryan? 
um, Jared Goff versus Bill Belichick or Bailey Zappi mm-hmm. as a favorite. Uh, I I think I think New England might be. I able think they'll hand the ball off fifty times. Yeah, and in a game script like that, I like the team getting the three extra points. Right. Um, I I don't think this is going to be a crazy shootout, but I do think, and we don't know. We don't know if Amon Ra is going to play. I think obviously that is huge. They have a bye next week as well. So oh, okay. all right. the, that's the all I need to hear. Is they're going to let let their guys heal. This almost feels like one of those road trips where I I don't know I I don't know what to think here because how do you how do you lay points with these quarterbacks? Um, Research Flat Earth is saying Mac Jones uh, practice. He may no, have practice, no, but there's no. no way. Matt Patricia revenge spot. Are we worried no, about? No, well, that? They, they, according to Ian Rappaport, uh, Mac Jones is back in practice and pushing to play. At least he's got a shot. I, I don't know. That to me is crazy. I, I just don't think, yeah, everyone's saying it's really unlikely. I think he's, I think he's given it the college try. Um, it, uh, Bettis is saying Zappy has the best arm in, in on the team. I against <laughs> green Bay in overtime, he looked like a guy that was really overwhelmed. Now, yeah. should he be better? <laughs> should he be better with a week to prepare? Sure. But what did the lions do? The lions just bring the house. Which is not a good strategy against good quarterbacks like Aaron Rodgers, who can pick you apart. But yep. when you're when you're facing a guy who most likely is making his first career start, uh, that is trouble. A lot of action coming in on the. Again, why? So money is coming in on the Patriots. Why? Well, because uh, they they're fading Detroit because they think Detroit's defense is horrible. But I don't know if the Patriots have a dynamic offense that they can exploit. Uh, the Detroit weaknesses, right? And the weaknesses of being able to run the ball against them. New England can run the ball against teams that are trying to stop them and are good at it. Yeah, that to me is the handicap. So you're taking New England. I I think I'm gonna take New England. I I think who has stopped like who has Detroit stopped on the ground? Your Eagles like made a mess of their defense. Well, I I think it's tough to because they the. Detroit has played a couple of different games. This is going to be a completely different game script for the Lions. But that being said, I think they're going to be able to move the ball against the Patriots. I'm taking Detroit plus the points. I think I think last week was like kitchen sink game. You know, that was the week where you got the backup no, I, quarterback I, juice. I definitely like the idea of buying them after that, but I, I don't mind playing Ramondre or Damian Harris in DFS. Um oh <laughs> <laughs> a Boston cap for checking in. Oh yeah, what's uh, he's his saying? He's not game? playing according to the Eat Writers. Uh, <laughs> so I'm assuming he's meaning Beat Writers. He says bet the under on Harrison, over on Stevenson. I'm I like Stevenson to have a good game DFS wise, but I, I can't take Zappy as a favorite. I'm going to take Detroit in the points and hold out hope that uh, I'm on raw plays because obviously that's a, a huge difference in this game. Yeah. Look at the bye week. I, I have a feeling he's not going to play. I'll take new England I, again. I think new England runs the ball 45 times like cap or same Ryan. Yes. You know what? I also uh, Detroit as a dog, a little scary. You know, what's not scary. A delicious bag of trade coffee showing up at your house. Oh man. I, I live, breathe and drink trade coffee. I mean, who does it again? Part about being a degenerate is you're always up, you're hungover, uh, you have to stay up late. These are situations where you need coffee, and I don't know about you, but I'm I'm too old to drink shitty coffee. Uh, it's just like, come on, what are we doing here? Like, treat yourself to a nice cup of coffee. It's how you start your day. It's what gets you through the afternoon. If I didn't have my nice ice trade coffee in the afternoon, I don't know what I would do. I would have to just. Imagine sitting there listening to Colby bitch for four hours straight about targeting calls without iced coffee to keep you alert so you can multitask. I love delicious trade coffee. And the best part is it's matched it's uh, specifically to my flavor profile. You get started, you take that fun coffee quiz, uh, and they just match you up. Also, trade coffee is a small business. And again, imagine brewing up the best cup of coffee you've ever had. I can 100% vouch for that. Yes, sir. It is delicious. Drinktrade.com slash SGP for $30 off your subscription to the best coffees in the country. Uh, last but not least, Odds Trader. Again, Odds Trader, that's smarter, not harder. It is your one stop shop. Love logging in there. It's great to see all the different books, 
all the different live betting options. Um, it has bet trackers. So you can kind of keep track of what you're on uh, play by play updates, live scores, uh, game stats, injury stats, projected game day, weather. it is, it is a really useful tool. Highly recommend odds trader. Get started today. Sign up over at odds trader.com slash blue wire. That's O D D S trader.com slash blue wire odds trader. The number one site for all your game day bets. Oh, I did just lay points with Bailey Zappy potentially. <clears throat> there is that. All right. Once again, Carolina, Sean, almost like they're a West Coast team, gets put into a late slate. We're now on to the 105 kick. Uh, why are they doing this to us? Matt Rule, execution on a public Prime on a time. public stage. San Francisco heads to Carolina where San Francisco laying six and a half, minus two seventy five on the money line. Carolina plus two twenty five. Matt Rule still the head coach. Thirty nine and a half is the total. San Francisco is this is the start of a two game road trip. I assume the Niners are going to do that thing where they hang out in West Virginia. Mm. So again, this who could do be they a, have next week? This could be a bro. Uh, Ryan, little, use that card. Who do you have next week? Oh, sorry. Oh, why? Why know. would you bring that up? Fortunately for you, I stare at it so much. It's basically memorized. They have Atlanta, so I, I don't know. I guess maybe mm. they, maybe they'll go up to. Uh, I would assume they'll be staying out there anyway. Uh, what, what's the story here with this one? Jimmy G laying all these points on the road. Kyle Shanahan laying all these points on the road. <laughs> It's another. We said it with the Jets, right? You have offensive line cluster injuries. Uh, we lost Trent, Trent Williams two weeks ago. They his backup now yeah, out. His backups out, which is which and is really scary. Carolina, they scored a touchdown for me when I rolled them out in DFS a couple weeks back. Uh, Burns and the boys, they can get after it a little bit. The ref um, report actually leans Carolina here. I just, again, I test. I can just not. I can't fade this 49ers swarming defense. I mean, to me, what's scary is the situational spot for the 49ers coming off a big Monday night win against their rival at home. Now you're flying out all the way to the East coast, going up against a Carolina team that you should destroy. It could be, it could be easy to look ahead, yes. but <laughs> man, it is tough to take the Panthers. Kyle Shanahan looking ahead to Atlanta, little Kyle Shanahan revenge spot. Yeah. I mean, Shanahan's not great. 10 points the in both their road games. They scored. Ten points each. But game. Ryan, as you pointed out, that was before they let Jimmy G have the playbook. Um, some <laughs> of that was with Trey well, Lance Trey in Lance the monsoon. I I think I mean if you had to set a line, 49ers defense scoring versus the Panthers offense. Who like what would you set the spread at? Just the 49ers defense. Because you look at any sort of matchup, Bosa Bosa personally, I think could end Baker Mayfield's can, life. Can I tell you something crazy? Because I, I think the matchup. You're right. The matchup is very much tilted. Yeah. The situation is a little nerve wracking. But, but the 49ers have scored a defensive touchdown against the Rams each season the last four seasons. Yeah. So they just did what they always do against the Rams. Okay. So I also think Carolina has a decent defense here, and they're going to get after Jimmy G. And Jimmy G under pressure sucks, and 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 it's not quite a, a tenant of of the business. But laying six and a half points with Kyle Shanahan and Jimmy G is never a good idea. I, I guess I would say the stat I keep coming back to is Matt Rule one in twenty six when a team <laughs> scores seventeen points. I think it's going to be close. Will the Niners? They they have not scored seventeen points on the road yet. I think. Uh, uh, oh, and Bosa, of course, research flat earth. This guy really does his research. He, he uh, both he's pointing out that uh, Bosa hates Baker because of the flag oh, no, plant during the gonna... Oklahoma game. That's all I need to hear. Give me the 49ers. I know it's chalky. Ryan, sharps like you will be all over Carolina with that value, but I can't take Matt Rule or this Panthers team. As you pointed out, Ryan, we're going to look back and say, man, what about all those times where he could have bet against Matt Rule? Sean. Yes. Six and a half. They're just putting the candy out for you and you're snap. You're not even checking for needles. You're just gonna munch down on that Razor candy. Razor blades are gonna be great. The needle in it. This is disgusting. But here's the here's where you missed on your handicap. San Francisco's defense scores a touchdown, but so does Carolina's. Mm, okay. It gets gets lost in the wash. Philly heads to Arizona. 
Philly laying five and a half minus two fifty on the money line. Cardinals plus two hundred. Forty nine is the total. Uh, the word has it you will be in the building. Yes, Ryan, I'll be in the building. I know you'll try and say, "Oh, hey, the last time you were with your uh, buddies, uh, Justin and Rob, yep. they lost against the Cardinals. That was at home in the Chip Kelly era. In between that game, I I went and saw a game with Justin where we won at in Los Angeles against the LA Chargers in route to uh, winning the Super Bowl in 2017. So that mojo has been cleansed. I mean. It, First off, Arizona is a horrible, horrible home team. Zero and seven against the spread in their last seven home games. Three and seven straight up last ten. Arizona starts out really slow. Eagles are very good in the first half, in particular. Uh, Arizona worst point differential in the first three quarters in the league at minus fifty seven. Um, Philly, l- listen pew, to the defense. Pew, pew. Uh, the the what the Eagles have done: sixteen sacks first. 10 takeaways, first in the league. 21 three and outs, first in the league. 56 completion percentage uh, allowed, uh, first in the league. 277 yards allowed, third in the league. Three straight weeks, the Eagles have had the NFC Defensive Player of the Week. Uh, and the Cardinals are really just bad at home. And, and do we have a screeching car sound effect? You're staring in the rearview mirror, Sean. No, I'm looking to the future where the Eagles are going to fucking kick their ass. Um, Dude, there. Have you looked at their injury report? Marquise Brown uh, did not practice. Offensive lineman Max Garcia did not practice. Rodney Hudson didn't practice. Uh, Matt Prater didn't practice. Justin Pugh nose, didn't practice. Nose beer related injury for Matt Prater. I mean, they are really, really banged up. Again, could Kyler scramble around and and pull something out of his ass? Maybe, but man, uh, twenty one of AJ Brown's twenty five catches have gone for ten plus yards. Um, and while dealing with pass rushers, Kyler Murray's turn turnover worthy play percentage soars to 9.1%. And if you're thinking like, oh, maybe they're looking ahead to Dallas, which if you had your card, you would bring that up as a point, oh, Ryan. It, it's one of However, my points, yeah. during the press conference, uh, Jalen hurts. They were all asking oh. him about Manning cast and all this other stuff. And he goes, Y'all didn't ask me about the Cardinals. I'll tell you about the Cardinals. And he went off and gave the scouting report for the Cardinals, how they're a tough defense, how they're going to attack them, how they're taking them seriously. Jalen hurts is locked in. Yeah. He's loaded. I'm going to be at the game. Shout out to fans of Philly.com P H a N S oh, wow. of Philly.com. Going to be hanging out with those guys doing the tailgate. If you're in Arizona, hit me up in the discord. I already had a Cardinals fan uh, asked to meet up. Um, no, know, not, I, not on game day. Well, how's that work? <laughs> Uh, you know, I'll, I'm down to talk some shit. Uh, ideally, you're an Eagles fan. Fans of Philly.com. Head over there, and uh, yeah, they're win bet as well. Promo code uh, X. Fans of Philly, twenty five dollar bet gets a fifty dollar free bet. Brian, I'm just all this Eagles team is great. They're they're playing at an incredibly yeah. high level. What's are you? They're you, four and zero. Oh, so you can't obviously, take the, they're not. They're like they're, they're they're being overvalued in the market marketplace for the obvious reasons, right? Everything you said is 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 no secret. Kyler uh, and this Cardinal Cardinals team has struggled, but uh, as you tried to ruin uh, at the beginning, the last time that you and your fellow mm. hosts of the Die Hard Eagles podcast all were at a game together, you kind of stomped through it. Yes, it was week fifteen, two thousand. It might be week five. I might have typoed that. No, it'd be fifteen. Week fifteen, two thousand fifteen. Where, funny enough, Sean. Arizona Cardinals were the team that came to the link that day. Yeah. It was a Cardinals Eagles game. I was there. Yeah. Sam Bradford was the quarterback. Yeah. Remember that? Sam Bradford, the quarterback now. Yep. No, he's not. But all That's three Sam of you Bradford. in the building achieved a 40 to 17 loss. Yeah. David Johnson went I, off. I'm just one to report data. Yeah. The other thing I would suggest is Cliff Kingsbury is 12 0 and 1 against the spread as an underdog. Against coaches who haven't won the Super Bowl. <laughs> wow. And Nick Sirianni you, has not you, won the Super Bowl. Did you yet. pull a muscle digging that one out? <laughs> I was I that did. is a stretch. <laughs> Hopefully you warmed up before you found that nugget, Ryan. I was I was stretching before that one. Come on. It's a solid Are you gonna one. take you're gonna take the Cardinals? I mean, you got too cute with Carolina, but no, are you gonna do it with Arizona? You know, we didn't get into the, the the nitty-gritty, but I have a list here. Edge in my notes it says edge cases. And then I have razor blade emoji and I have the teams that are, are 
are winless. Get out of my notes. Don't worry about it. Winless or or have not uh, law uh, have not won yet. So I wrote Houston, New Orleans, of course, zero and four ATS and winless uh, straight up for Houston. And I wrote Philly and Atlanta, of course, Philly undefeated and Atlanta undefeated ATS. It, it's a it's a system play fading Philly week five. Oh, love it! Thank you, Ryan. Yeah. You've been gr- you've been horrible You're, picking the Eagles. Yeah. Uh, I do think Zach Ertz shoulders anytime. are sore. Let's go, <laughs> Dallas. Hassan Reddick a revenge game as D. Bettis. Zach Ertz out. revenge game. Yeah. By the way, I love that his picture on most fantasy sites has has him with that frosted hair. <laughs> really looks like uh, some weird boy band version. Looks of like Eminem. a bouncer for Eminem. <laughs> Dallas heads to Los Angeles, where the Rams are laying five minus two thirty on the money line, plus one ninety for the cow girls. Forty three is the total man. This is uh you know, obviously torn here because five points is a lot to lay with Matty Stafford right now. The way he's turning oh, the man. ball over the interception prop is almost certainly going to make it on the uh, prop show card uh, with, with digs and, and the well, Ryan, you talk about outliers, Cooper rush four and oh, uh in his career four and oh against the spread. Something has to give. I'm obviously terrified about the mm. Rams offensive line versus Micah Parsons. Um, that is that is very much a, a problem. They, all right, so like the but, Rams struggle with outside pass rushers, and obviously the Cowboys have that uh, in we, this case. Don't we? What's the reason to take the Rams? Well, one, they're playing the Cowboys, Ryan. So as as a tenant of our organization, fuck Dallas. I I think, and I'm gonna make a case Ugh. for this Rams team. The the Rams are pretty good coming off a loss. They're also a much better coach. Like Sean McVay is a better coach than Mike McCarthy. I think they have a chip on their shoulder, and I think they're gonna they're gonna show up for this game. Uh, Cowboys, unlike the Eagles, are looking ahead towards next week. You have the distraction with Dakota Rain Prescott. Can he hold the ball? Can he not hold the ball? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I I think. The it, th- that's glorious. The controversy, uh, Dallas. Would they be looking ahead? Th- yes, to the I Eagles? said they they will look ahead. The Eagles will but, not. But the, what like this Rams team is is borderline unbettable as a favorite. I I don't see the matchup. I don't see how they're going to score points. I like them. Cooper I, Cup. I, I like them off a loss. Yeah, I think Cooper Cup is going to have an insane game. This number is horrible. I mean, obviously, I'm not taking the Cowboys. This is a horrible number. <laughs> it's a horrible number. Yeah, I mean Cooper Rush on the road, Ryan. I know you're a big uh, ginger guy. Aaron Donald hopefully creates. Aaron some sort Donald of habit. could, and and Cooper Rush is. I'm not locking this one. He's up. yet to have a wake up call game. He's uh, he's yet to have a welcome to the National Football League. I thought the Giants <laughs> would be able to give it to him. They couldn't. I thought the Bengals could give it to him. Maybe maybe Cooper Rush. Aaron is, Donald, maybe. Maybe Cooper Rush is the best quarterback in NFL history. He's gonna go undefeated his entire career. Or maybe the Rams show up on Sunday. Don't we want Dak to have to walk into a situation where he's gonna win his job? <laughs> he's rushing back to get to make sure he has a chance to get his job back before Cooper Rush just steals it all together. Yeah, I guess give me the Rams, but yeah, this is Rams off a loss. This, That's a handicap. This is filthy. I, the the other thing I would say is a um, lot of people going to be betting the Cowboys in this one. Public dogs have fleas, which, Ryan. which makes you worried about the number even more. All right, Sunday Night Football, Ravens are rolling out the all black uniforms, Sean. Mm. And I and I we should. Um, I feel like this number is not right. Cause it's, is it is it three and a half? Yeah, we got to pick this at three and a half. Baltimore laying three and a half, minus one seventy-five on the money line, plus one forty-five for the Bengals. Forty-eight and a half is the total. I mean, the the easy, simple handicap here is just simply to say, hey, Bengals scored forty-one points in both games last week, last year. Yeah, or you know, AFC North games usually come down to a field goal. Why would you not take the team getting the plus three and a half? I mean, we saw. Real division in that Ravens locker room with the Jim Harbaugh call, the way they played that, the frustration, the fact that he doesn't trust his defense. Oh, interesting. Uh, okay, no, I, I like this because I don't. I, I, I actually, I, I, I think that was like the, the whip, the, the whiplash reaction 
but I was I was gonna use the same thing to say like this galvanizes the unit. This is still a good team. You you throw out a couple not, bad quarters and no, not not when the cornerback is going at the head coach. Um, I don't think that's that good. That was right after the game. Yeah, things are cool now. I'm, I'm saying I don't think historically that's not a good sign. Hmm. Um, he should be passionate. He's the Bengals defense. the Bengals finally got some of their offense going, uh, and the the weakness of this Bengals team is still their offensive line. But the Ravens don't have a uh, the pass rush. They don't have that blitz. They don't have that awesome defense that they had in previous years. Like they're struggling to generate a ton of pressure. They get out to hot starts and they let it slip away because they don't have strong hmm. uh, players in the defensive secondary. Like they still, you know, they let Miami back in that game. They let Buffalo back into that game. Can they beat shitty teams like the Jets? Sure. But I, I think this Bengals team with that mini bye week, I think they're going to come in here fired up. Um, and you know, again, a lot of these when in doubt, I'm going to take the three and a half here. Um, Rashad Bateman is dealing with an injury. I think that's going to limit Isaiah even, likely loading and, and maybe, <laughs> but I, I like, uh, I like the Bengals in the points here a lot. I, you know, again, I, I, I'm Ravens are two and two and they've been losing for 14 seconds this season. Um, also that like the, the one of the reasons that tell you how, like how good they, I, I understand like you could, you could look observe both sides of that coin. But I would say it means they have trouble closing out. If it was just one game, like it was in that dolphins thing, you could say that's an outlier, but I think the fact that it's had a, happened a couple times, some of which at home, that is scary. And uh, also Ronnie Stanley, uh, the one reason I ended up locking up the Ravens was because Ronnie Stanley was trending to play and then he didn't. Um, and I think, and I don't know if he'll play this week either. Like the fact that he was trending in the right direction and didn't play that to me is always a, a red flag. Yeah. I, I think this is a case of, you know, we Baltimore let down against a couple offenses that happened to be resembling two of the best offenses in the league. And the Bengals have been far from the looking like the best. I think they're going to, I think they're so, going to look like a great offense because of T Higgins, like the confidence T Higgins had against a pretty good Miami defense. He had himself a game last Thursday night, home I, game, prime time, Harbaugh, Lamar under the lights. They, lay that's the three been and disappointing. And a half. Lay the three and, a, and here's what I would say to the, the, the 41 point in both game crowd. Uh, one of those matchups was against Josh Johnson. The other, the Ravens were up 17, 13 in the third quarter. Lamar went out shortly after. So, okay. Yeah. They're, they're going to need those big, long Jamar chase touchdowns. So if it, if it turns into a get right game, I think they'll be in yeah. play. If not, I think know. it is. I think, and I think you're nailing it there. I, I think it is a get right game for Cincinnati. They're going to need it. They, they started keep, out, they, they started out a little sleepy. They got a win against the jets. They got a win against a good dolphins team where they played some good defense and showed up and they're going to show up against Baltimore, Baltimore. Number one offensive DVOA 27th for the Bengals. It's going to be tough to hang in a shootout with, with those kind of numbers. All right. Monday night football, the Raiders Raiders. They're heading to Kansas city where the chiefs are laying seven minus three fifty on the money line, Vegas plus two seventy five. Fifty one and a half is the total the kind of game they played against the Broncos is the kind of game they would need to play against the Kansas city chiefs to, to get things going, establish that run, you know, get the offense moving because obviously Carr needs the running game to make everything else work. But it, it does seem like at seven it's fool's gold and we should just be pounding the chiefs. Yeah, I mean Raiders one and five against the spread in their last six games. Uh, Chiefs have only lost one of their last ten home games. Is it a look ahead spot? That could be that could be the issue. This is Ryan, a sandwich spot. And again, where's your car? This is, look at this. Look at this sandwich. We got one. That's why I'm asking. You. We got one piece of bread that is the Tampa Bay game, the revenge game, the get fix the Super Bowl game. We have the other. The Buffalo Bills, who again, they obviously want nope. to beat again, and they know the Bills are going to come at them, and that was a brutal. And then in in the middle, Ryan, we have the piece of meat known as the Raiders. This is a great sandwich spot. Um, you know, Raiders could have been looking ahead a little bit uh, against the against the Broncos. It's a division. To, to me, to me, 
the thing I really like is the Raiders got their center back, Andre James. Like Carr is a guy who's going to need time uh, if he's going to cover this. So I think getting Andre James back is big. You look at all like the you know Mahomes versus Carr. A lot of that stuff favors uh, the Chiefs, rightly so. Two and six when a seven point favorite in his last eight divisional games against the spread. Who? Carr. Mahomes. Oh, Mahomes. Yeah, I mean, I, I like I like the Raiders here. I think the Chiefs, their defense is interesting because I think it can show up at times. But I don't know, man. Like, I, I, seven is a lot for this Raiders team in a division game where I think they're going to be able to move the ball against the against the Chiefs. Contrarian angle for sure. I think this probably gets bigger than seven. Yeah. Um, I think the sandwich spot is real. I I do worry. Vegas is looking ahead to a buy, Sean. Um, yes, added, I'm going to keep taking those teams. Uh, but I, I do wonder if this is the same caliber look ahead spot. It's a division matchup. It's a division matchup against a, a fan base that's fucking got to be so annoying if you're Patrick Mahomes. And so I, I hear, I, I love everything you're saying about the situational sandwich spot, spot. but it's a divisional game. It, it it's it's Monday Night Football. It's it's hard to really get behind that. I'm still going to be on the Raiders. Raiders. I mean, again, Mahomes hasn't been a covering machine in the division. No, as a big time favorite. All right, let's go. Time for the Lock Dog Tease presented by Win Bet Sports <laughs> slash Win Bet. <laughs> Should you go first this week or should I go first? Well, Ryan, I think um, my locks have been great. My dogs have been good. Do we trot out the point spread song for a little uh, mojo? Just play. If you remember last year, get it going, point man. spread song for me was a slump buster. Fire it up, Ryan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord, please help me the spread. I bet my last diamond. It is available on Spotify. <laughs> oh Lord, it's called, it's called the point spread song. That makes oh no Lord, sense. Your team's trying to go downtown. Oh, sure it does, Sean. Spread. My bookies chase me around the block. <laughs> They're so close to rhyming. The clock. They really are. I gamble all night. My eyes are red. The all right, Ryan. Are people, right. people get the idea. I got poker my Am I going first? Oh um, I'm going to let that. Uh, the audience should vote. Should Ryan. In the YouTube chat, go first. I don't want to mess up your, your, your King Kramer. You're on mm. an incredible lock streak. I don't want to mess your mojo up with getting my lock straight, even though my dogs have been straight fire. All right. Well, uh, this is the way it works. I think one of these bets I would locked in weeks ago. Pittsburgh Steelers plus fourteen. Okay. That's an obvious one. For the second lock, I. A, I know that you want this one, and I and I think we've been good to not share uh, in the lock juice. So I'm going to leave Thursday night for for you to come gobble. Okay, up. thank you. What I am going to play is I'm going to take. I, I I can't decide, and you know me, I'm a contrarian. I can't when I can't decide between two plays, I just look where the money splits are, and so give me. The Cleveland Browns. Oh, nice! I really, like this. really. This is more of a. This is a Jimmy's and Joe's handicap. Yeah, I just like the 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 trend, the trajectory of one team versus the other. I think Cleveland comes out. Nick, huge game from Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Like you I said, I like that. I like for that for my dog. Mm. Dog. I I I will not give out the New York Football Giants as a dog. I will not give out. All right, I've not been good with the dogs, and I I feel like I've been trying to get uh, too big, too big on the money lines. So this week we'll uh, we'll shrink it up a little bit. I realized I accidentally gave you Dallas plus five, right? I, I'm adjusting. I, I saw that. <laughs> I, I am going to play, and gosh darn it, 
But I, I told you the last couple times the Jags have been favorites. Oh, let's They've go, lost Houston! Outright by oh. two touchdowns. Give me the Houston Texans plus two sixty. Wow, for my tees. Give me the Minnesota Vikings laying a point. Give me the Tampa Bay Buccaneers laying two and a half. And give me the Cleveland Browns up to eight and a half. Okay, solid tees. Thank you. You did put your lock in your tees, which is something I usually avoid, but um, yeah. mm, that, that's one way to look at it. Give me the Denver Broncos minus three at home. Fuck Matt Ryan. I mean, seriously. Um, my next lock. <laughs> I want. I, I, I also like that for the for the record. <laughs> I want to go, Ryan. What what should I do here? Should I take oh, wow. Miami minus three and a half, or am I going Houston plus seven? Because I like both those. You've, I feel like you've done a good job. Um, Miami right, minus three and a half to me. I love that spot, but I'm worried. I just keep going against. I've picked against the Jets. I think a couple of times and got boned. So the last couple of weeks, we've we've done this where I've told you, you know, this would have been a lock, and it, and those those have also been hitters hit. I, Miami was the next one. All right, Miami minus three it's and Teddy a half. Teddy covers, baby. He is Teddy covers. Teddy KGB for my um, dog. It's interesting because I I'm looking uh, Cleveland. That's not really that fun. Detroit. I'm pretty worried about that game. I'm going Seattle. I mean, the fact that Seattle is getting plus one ninety five on the money line as a oh, dog. dog. The Saints team figures out ways to lose games. Ryan, I, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, I'm all over Seattle here. What else we got for my tees? Let's hear it. Give me Green Bay minus two. That is easy. Uh, give me Philly as a pick, or plus a half, I guess. Somehow the game ends in a tie. And last but not least, give me the Minnesota Vikings. Oh no, Tampa Bay minus two and a half. That is the tease. All right, it's feeling pretty good. Wow. Yeah, it feels good. Ryan, I, time for the Circa Millions card. So mm, we got right. we got Pitt plus fourteen. Pittsburgh. You so we're, we're firing on Thursday. We are yep. firing. Oh, well, that means I got to do something tomorrow morning. All right. So we got we got Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Denver, and Miami. Um, I mean, I know what I would vote for for the 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 fifth pick. What's that? Well, based on what so what things we agree on, uh, we that we haven't already selected: Houston plus seven, Tampa minus eight and a half, Minnesota minus seven. I think that's it. And Las Vegas plus seven. Hmm. I mean, I'm fine with Houston. I'm fine with uh, Minnesota and Tampa. I I don't love the Las Vegas. Of those, which three do you like the best? I think it's Tampa. Tampa. Yeah, I mean Brady. Unless you want to force the dog. No, I, I'm fine. I mean, I feel like we have enough invested in Houston, Ryan. Tampa's the play then. Tampa Bay. Minus eight and a half. So our circuit millions card, and what are we? 12, 7, and one? 12, 12 and a half points. 12 and a half points. Pittsburgh plus 14. Cleveland plus two and a half. Denver minus three. Miami minus three and a half. Tampa Bay minus eight and a half. Woo-hoo! That feels pretty damn good. Hey, tune in tomorrow. We'll be doing a uh, NFL props show. Or actually, sorry, that's going to drop Friday. But uh, send in some prop questions if you like uh, at Gambling Podcast. As always, drop a nice rating and review, screenshot it, send it in via the uh, SGPN app. Just click contest. You can also enter the MLB contest in there. Follow SGPN Fantasy for their uh, jersey giveaway. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, second the money green, and he is Ryan. Sean, enjoy your trip to Arizona. Kramer, let it ride. <laughs>